guys, I can tell you our boy Fireball here, aka the Freak Stack Freak, he doesn't like bats particularly. He just finished coming home from the vet. So what we do now is we're gonna go ahead and get our shampoo. And we're gonna get a good amount up in there, right? Good amount. And then we're gonna go ahead and add just the top's worth of iodine to it, right? So that goes in there. And again, like I told you guys, the iodine is nothing more. Here, let me show you. I'm just gonna do this and mix it, right? So the, what the iodine does is it's gonna it's gonna kill any um, external parasites that he may have picked up a flea or anything. So let's get let's get this going now. Like I said earlier, Fireball's very well behaved, but his body language is gonna tell you he doesn't like bats at all. So it's really important when you have a dog that's showing you that to definitely. Handle the situation with your energy. Stay there, Bubble. Handle your situation with your energy. Make sure you don't get water in your ears. They will never trust you again if you do that. All right? And then also, I'm gonna show you how we run the sponge down his face and how we, we get everything where we want it. So first things first. Come here, come here, Fire. There you go, stay there. Ha, ha, stay there. Okay. All right, so there we go. We got the shampoo on him, all right. Gotta make sure you spread that shampoo out everywhere. Otherwise, it's gonna just stay up here. So you gotta bring it down here to the elbows, armpits, down underneath the neck area, yeah. He's got no choice, and uh, you know I'm giving I'm giving him some calming energy. But even like that, he just really doesn't like this. Uh oh, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, bubble, stay there, good boy. Uh oh, come on, come on. Uh, we bathe our adult dogs once a month. In the winter time, yeah, and easily twice a month um, during, during the summer, during the summer months. Also, they do have the bully oasis that they jump into. So they jump in there and pretty much they're rinsing off. So what we do is we we'll actually jump in there with shampoo once they're in there and uh, shampoo them and let them rinse off or whatever. Uh, you know. But for all intents and purposes today, we're gonna show you guys how we're doing here. Yeah, I can tell you, I definitely put a lot of shampoo on there. We're still, still feeling a little soapy, even though we know there's no soap added to it or detergent, which is very, very, very good for the dogs. Huh? So for Fireball, he's developing a lot of these uh, these tears, right? You see them. So I've had some of you writing to me and asking, you know, I thought you were feeding raw diet and the raw diet fixes that. 
And it does. You see, Fireball has been spoiled by his mama, my wife, and he loves sleeping in front of a fan. And that's where we're getting these tears from. We notice he's getting the majority of them on this side, and that's because the pan is coincidentally on that side of the bed when he goes to sleep. Um, so that's that's basically the main reason you're seeing that with him. Um, there are things that you can actually use, but not necessarily for for a dog that sleeps in front of a fan like Angel Tears, I believe that's the name of it, or something to that effect. Uh, you can buy that and it will, you put it on them and uh, those tears pretty much uh, disappear, the tear stains. So, you ready to go, Bubba's? Yeah. Yeah, this guy, he really, really hates fat. Stay there, Fire, to get your towel. Colors popping with the sun hitting them. Definitely that shampoo gave him a nice little gloss. Just just enough. Just enough where where, where you can see it. So uh yeah, free stack doing good with that shampoo. Scab, little scab. This is mainly due to the fact uh, that he got bit by some ants and he got infected. Um it's definitely got a lot smaller, really fast, it's nice and pink. Pink is good. If you see yellow or green, it usually means infection. Uh, it's not swollen, and it's got the edges growing around it, and every day that, that little circle is becoming smaller and smaller. That's what you want to see. Now, what we're about to put together here is going to be puppy shampoo. Uh, you know, I've made videos in the past where I've used detergent uh, on adult dogs, but we don't like doing that with pups. So, essentially, this is what you're going to need. Uh, I'm using New Vet Puppy and Kitten Shampoo. Uh, it says baby powder fresh, removes odors. It's tearless, it's biodegradable, pH balanced. This is key for the coat and detergent and soap free. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of povidone iodine, solution 10%. No more than about five cc's is all I gotta add. And of course, I need my cup so I can mix them. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a good helping of new vet puppy and kitten shampoo i just went ahead and did that as you can see now all we're going to do is just fill in this little top and that is all i am pouring in there okay if you want to see that's what it looks like you can you can mix it like so if you wanted to just shake it and mix it it's nice and mixed and now we're gonna open the water and wash them. Before I do, let me just say this. What iodine does is it dries out the exoskeleton of any type of parasite like flea or tick or anything like that. But in addition, it's also gonna do the same for little organisms, bacteria, germs, whatever, that are gonna to try to grow on that wound. Remember, I'm trying to keep that wound nice and pink. The edges are there and it's closing rather quickly. So you don't want to bathe the puppy every day with this solution, but when you have a puppy that has what he's got going on, uh, I'm doing once a week and it's, it's working out pretty well for us. So let's go ahead and open the water. I'm pretty sure he's not going to like that. Yeah. And I know this because I bathed them all before and you know, you know the puppies that like the water and then you also know the puppies that don't like the water, right? So, yeah, yeah, this guy doesn't necessarily like it. Um, I'm surprised he's not putting up much of a fight for us today. He normally does, but I guess he knows uh, today we're, we're making a video, so he's cool with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it all the way along his back. And then, you know, you just get to work, make sure it hits every single nook and cranny. Um, underneath, you also want that belly area because you got to realize they lay down a lot. You got to realize they lay down a lot, and so when they do, they're picking up fungus <laughs> that later on they got to scratch and whatnot. So, you know, just making sure that you're spreading it everywhere evenly 
it's usually a very good way of getting this shampoo to work. Also, I'm gonna tell you one other thing about this particular shampoo. You wanna leave it on them at least a good five minutes before you rinse it off. If you can leave it on there longer, the pup is able to stand it, and, and you can leave it on there a lot longer. I mean, the more the merrier, to be honest with you. But if you were to ask me, at minimum, how much time does it have to be on them? I would say at least five minutes. So we use this on either adult dogs or pups that have any kind of wound going on. Also, if I ever take a dog to the vet, um, when we get back, what I typically do at the vet is I'll go ahead and pour some coconut oil on the dog because nine times out of 10, they're gonna come back with a flea, man. It's just the facts of life. And the other thing is, once they come home, they're gonna get themselves a nice little iodine bath so that we are able to kill the fleas and ticks and any parasites going on on the outside. What ends up happening is once it complete, once the dog's coat completely dries, the iodine goes to work. And the way it does is it completely dehydrates the shell of the flea or tick or parasite, cracks it open, and spills all the insides out. I will say this new vet shampoo is smelling phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It smells, it smells just like baby powder, really. Right? And um, you gotta be very careful with too strong of smells that are being added to puppy shampoos. Only because if the smell is overbearing, more likely than not, it could have something in there. All right guys, five minutes have gone by. And here we go. Yeah. Ah, stay there, buddy. Stay there. I always try to make sure we don't get to their ears. I try cleaning their ears uh, separately uh, because if you try putting some of this water in their ear, um, you're going to have a puppy that's going to violently be jumping and not letting you wash them. Uh, whereas we have a different way to do the ears and that's with either a sponge or even paper towel. We go ahead and dip them in vinegar and alcohol. And the reason for that is so the alcohol could um, make sure that it evaporates that, that vinegar that's going into the ear. You gotta keep in mind, you don't want something moist in the ear that's just gonna stay there. So that's the reason for the alcohol. We make sure that we have alcohol on there, isopropyl, uh, I believe 75 or 70 percent is what we use and it works just fine. Uh, the alcohol is not there to kill anything really. It's mostly there to simply uh, help evaporate uh, the vinegar. The vinegar is the one I want in there because I don't want fungal infections. Alright? Any, anywhere that is wet and dark, um, you know, fungus tends to want to grow in, the, in those areas. So, in order to stay away from, you know, adding to the moisture, we just go ahead and, and add the alcohol. And like I said, it helps evaporate. And that's it. So this pup, yeah, this pup is definitely learning about bats. He's been getting a bath once a week. Um, and that's mostly because we are trying to do everything possible uh, to not aggravate or or reinfect uh, this right here. Um, so, you know, we've done, we, we do uh, iodine baths. We've done uh, vinegar baths. But mostly iodine, because uh, like I said earlier, we're just trying to keep everything disinfected, you know, and you're not just going to disinfect that one area when you bathe them, it's disinfecting everything. Now, mind you, we know this is a pup and we know that he's going to get into a bunch of stuff. This is why we're bathing him once a week. Right now, he's actually outside with the rest of the pups. Um, we're not going to keep him caged up or anything like that. I give it about a week, maybe two weeks max before it's all gone. Nice and clean. 
And look at the boy's wound. Definitely healing. And he has that iodine everywhere, which is a good thing. Keep everything from uh, wanting to grow right on there, right on that wound.